Hello, good morning. This is Guillaume from Prestige Panama Realty. This morning we have somebody special, special guest uh, directly from South Africa. His name is Marinus Van Jarbel. Did I pronounce that right, Marinus? Yeah, very close to it. The surname is Van Jarsveld. It's uh, Dutch how, how do you, in how, origin. How do you pronounce your name so people understand exactly how's your name? Marinus is good. Your your pronunciation was good. It's Marinus. And and the and the last name? It's Van Jarsveld. Mm -hmm. So in the way I said it, it sounds very Spanish, right? Latin American accent. It is. <laughs> <Understand>. <laughs> right. Very good. All right. Um, Mr. Marinus is a lawyer by profession. At the same time, he's a business person and he's in the meat industry. So he raised cattle and he knows a little bit about this sector. So I wanted to know a couple of things so we can compare what do you do in South Africa with Panama and find out if it's the same, if it's different, so people can understand what's going on around the world. So the first question is, how South Africa is handling the coronavirus? It was something unexpected or you were preparing because you heard news from other countries that were getting affected? Yeah, I think uh, our government was proactive um, in the sense that when we got the news of this from especially Europe um, and then also starting in America, um, our president has called a lockdown for firstly 21 days, which has now been extended to the 28th of um, April, which is basically taking us beyond the 1st of May. So effectively the 1st of May, is workers day in South Africa so that's normally a public holiday so we will only commence work after that so initially a lot of people in South Africa felt that maybe the government has overreacted because there was a very low amount of cases that was reported um, I think the benefit of closing the borders um, and also the, um, the ports to South Africa um, at the benefit that uh, the infection didn't enter South Africa anymore. So the infection is now only spread, uh, you know, amongst the people of South Africa. But the benefit was that uh, our government has acted proactively very quickly. Um, and we have been closed now since the 28th of March, um, which is now already the second phase, we started today, the second phase, the second period of the lockdown, the extended area. Okay, so if your government acted quickly and then let's say you are in the quarantine, business are closed, what businesses are op open right now? Because at least you need to have the supermarket, the pharmacy, do you have delivery? What's, what's going on with those businesses? Yeah, so the only businesses that is allowed to operate currently in South Africa is healthcare workers, especially um, the hospitals, the pharmacies, uh, that type of businesses. And then obviously your grocery shops, your food shops, um, your green grocers, that type of places where you can access some food. Um, and where you can obtain uh, only essentials. So there's a big thing that happened yesterday, for example, um, because some of the liquor store owners um, did a plea to the president to say, can we please reopen some of the liquor stores, etc. And he has said no. Uh, he, he made it clear that no liquor stores uh, will be open, no bars will be open, etc. And there's currently also no restriction on the selling of any tobacco. <clears throat> so no cigarettes is sold, no tobacco is sold, uh, no liquor is sold, and this will um, maintain, or the, the, the government will maintain that position till uh, the end of the lockdown, which is basically, like I said, the 2nd of May. 
So basically, the the economy in general is like an on post, and just waiting for the quarantine to be done so people can get back to normal. That's what I think is happening there, right? Yeah, it is happening, and that's the expectation. The problem is that. Um, you know, like in other parts of the world, um, a lot of businesses, especially medium-sized and small businesses, are struggling. You need to pay your rent. You need to pay your employees something, at least to, you know, cover the basic uh, necessity. And that happens while we don't work. You know, we are in a lockdown position. Not even the court system is operating at the moment as it used to. So, um, you know, so there is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of anxious people out there because people don't know how they will survive this ordeal. Uh, what, what about, maybe you know, about the employees that they cannot get any money from their job? Are you guys in South Africa doing something like United States where you declare yourself like unemployed and then the government give you some money? Do you have assistance in any way for these people who have jobs? Yes, luckily there's a, there's a few very rich people that is, um, that is attached to South Africa and come from an, or originate from South Africa who has made a pitch of substantial amounts of money so the government has, uh, when they announced the lockdown, also announced this fund, which uh, people can and companies can also contribute to, so that we can um, at least try and, and, and limit the effect of this to some extent. So there is a possibility for small and medium businesses to make an application to government to get some sort of funding uh, although limited, but to assist a little bit in that sense. So it's not uh, similar to what we have in America, but it is it is at least something that can assist the poor. Okay, I see. Well, now I want to ask you a question that has to be directly with you, which is your cattle business. Are you still selling? Is the price went down? How, how you guys are managing that? Because I would like to compare with Panama to see is this something similar in the approach or just the government forget about you? What What is happening in the cattle business? Yeah, look, we, we had a bit of a bad run um, since the end of last year with the cattle industry. And that was caused by um, an outbreak of food and mouth disease in, a, in a, really in a corner of South Africa. Um, and we had a, a, a declaration from the government that, you know, basically all auctions, um, all the gathering of, of cattle uh, from different farms, etc., were stopped completely for a period of time. So all the auctions that was scheduled to take place in the latter part of, of last year, 2019, had to be postponed, um, which we did. And then in January, to the latter part of January, it reopened again because the food and mouth uh, were cleared up and, and sorted out. And then we were able to trade again. So as we got on our feet again, this uh, pandemic has struck us. And now the uh, agricultural business is regarded as an essential service because we obviously need to produce food uh, for all the people of South Africa. So uh, the agricultural business is regarded as an essential service, but what is happening now is when you have an auction, they only allow so many people there, and you need to keep social distancing and all these type of things. But the reason is that you are limited. You are restricted in your movement. So yes, you can attend the auction, there is even people that tried online auctions um, to, you know, go a bit further on that. But still, you need to transport your cattle, you need to transport your goats and your sheep that you buy on an auction, etc. And and everywhere that you come across, you are restricted. So it is not the it is not easy at the moment. It's very it's a very difficult situation. There is, for example, 
next week a Brahman uh, auction in uh, very close to my ranch in uh, in, in Limpopo province and um, and people that come from afar is struggling to find accommodation because they cannot uh, go and stay in a hotel or a guest house because that is not regarded as essential services at the moment. So people that travel far need to travel there and then they need to travel back, which is very uncomfortable because you need to and you want to attract people from as far as you can possibly can at your market. And where we had no difficulty with that in the past, this has become extremely difficult now. Okay, I, I see what you have there. And you, at the moment, can you sell your cattle if somebody wants to buy it? Well, I can sell my cattle. The only problem is, you know, I'm living in Johannesburg, which is approximately 200 kilometers from my farm. So for me to travel uh, there is difficult because, you know, there's a lot of restrictions and there's obviously the uh, risk in traveling um, and stopping somewhere, etc. So it, it has become very difficult in that sense. And from that perspective, you know, I haven't been to my farm for for at least three weeks now. So I am in telephonic contact with, with my people on the farm, my workers, etc., because they stay on the farm. They're not allowed to travel, save with the permit that we have provided them as essential workers. But it's not easy. Um, and therefore, it is very difficult. Uh, there's, there's lots of farmers with more than one farm and they need to travel back and from, you know, but, you know, we're trying to adhere to what the, the government wants us to do by keeping social distancing and not to, you know, travel unnecessary and to stay at home. Everyone wants you to stay at home and be safe. So we're trying to respect that and not travel unnecessary. So if you go to the supermarket and then you find meat there, where do they get that? If people cannot move around or, or trying to avoid the infection, how do they get the meat from where? Now, look, the, the meat producers are still operating and, uh, you know, just before the lockdown, because the president has announced the lockdown to be implemented like three days later, there was a little bit of confusion and a, a little bit of, um, I think, people uh, that suffered from a bit of a panic attack and uh, rushed to the shops to buy everything and thought that we're not going to have access to this. But all the shops are open um, and all I'm, when I'm talking about food shops and uh, grocery shops and so on. So when you go to the shops, uh, most of our chain type of shops um, are selling meat also. So the meat supply is there. It's maybe not as much as it used to be, but I haven't come across any problems at that point. So the meat producers are still there. Okay, perfect. Um, another question, when do you think South Africa in general will get back to normal? Is it going to take time? Is it going to be quick? What, what, what's your approach about that? Yeah, look, my, my approach, um, and maybe I'm going to start with government's approach first. Government's approach is to say we cannot just open it immediately after the lockdown period and we go back to what it was in March because the problem that we're facing is then we will just spread the virus, you know, more rapidly and then the whole lockdown is uh, falling flat on its, on its face. So the idea that government's got is to open it in phases and to phase it in basically to certain sectors. So, um, my view on it is I don't think it will open on the 2nd of May. Um, if there is certain industries that will open, it is more of an essential nature and they will, you know, gradually open up certain sectors as we go along. But things, for example, universities and schools, I think is going to remain closed for a while. Um, you can just imagine if the virus would spread in schools or hostels, for example. I mean, it will it will just create havoc 
um, and that's exactly what we've now tried to prevent from being in a lockdown position. So I I don't think you know things will be um, just opening up in May of this year as it was before March. I think we're going to see the lockdown to be implemented for quite a while. Unfortunately, our uh, death rate has has been very slow, luckily. But now, since I think two days ago, it has doubled. Now we are on 48 people that has died of this virus, while we were, you know, on seven and then 13 and then 24, and then it was like one extra 25, and now all of a sudden it has jumped up to 48. So there is unfortunately um, uh, some uh, spreading of the virus, despite the social distancing, despite the efforts that we make. But, uh, you know, as, as the medical people tells us, this thing has taken, you know, at least 14 days to show its its colors, and that's exactly what it's done now. So, uh, so I don't I don't think it will open up soon. And in the meanwhile, you know, everyone is very anxious about how will they go back to work and how will the economy look after this because we are very concerned about that aspect. It's funny that you say the second of May. <laughs> Your government is trying to start working with the local businesses to start pushing the economy because in Panama, uh, we have an airline that is called Copa. And my wife told me, I didn't check, that they are starting to sell tickets starting on the 2nd of May. So I guess it's like a global effort to start doing or preparing the people to start doing some business because let's say that you can stay in your house with your family for a while you can eat you have money well let's say you are not a millionaire but you can survive I, maybe i can do it the same in my house but i guess there are many people they are maybe just ready to hold it for one week so i guess the government is trying to balance between controlling the, the pandemia and trying to put some money on the streets. So we don't want to see like on the movies, like a zombie people, like, you know, going inside the store, destroying everything because I guess they want to eat. They, they want to have a survival instinct. So they will do, let's say, bad things in general. So I guess it's funny because the second of May, South Africa is far away from Panama. We have something similar to start like the economy on the 2nd of May. So I guess we have to see, that's the projection. Let's see what's gonna happen. And hopefully people start uh, getting better or we get maybe, or we get maybe the vaccine and for May everybody will get the cure and that's it. Everything back to normal in kind of the way, kind of the way. Yeah, I, I, you know, I spoke to a client this morning and he also sounded very uh, traumatized by all of this. You know, he's a pilot and I said to him, you know, I think we must be positive. We must try and, and remain positive. The fact of the matter is what we, under, what, what we must understand is that the economy has come to a complete still, you know, um, basically a stop street at the moment. We need to restart um, that process. Now, you must understand South African people are people that is outdoor people. No? We've got a sunny country. We've got much less rain than in Panama. So we've got a lot of sunshine and we've got a lot of people outside. Um, and we want to be outside. We want to be with social people. So to be restricted like this is extremely difficult from a social as well as an emotional perspective. And it will take time for people to adjust to how the world will look after this uh, pandemic. Um, and say so for that, we need to understand that there's also the thing about the economy that needs to you know, get back into shape. So a lot of people are most probably going to lose their jobs which puts enormous strain on, on, on families. 
Um, you know, you sit with social economic problems, which will need to be restored. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of events in South Africa, um, you know, that has been cancelled because of this, um, which, is, which is really of, 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 of very uh, bad uh, things that are happening at the moment, which no one can do anything about. You know, we are all in this together. So despite this, we need to encourage people, we need to stay positive, and we need to look beyond this and say, how will the world look? And look at that and say, you know, we will, we will, we need to find some good things pertaining to the time that we have now to spend with our families and spend with our, you know, with our loved ones, where we sometimes live, you know, like ship in the in the ocean we just go beyond and past each other now we've got the time to sit down and focus and play with our kids and you know enjoy it and uh, like someone the other day said tongue in the cheek you know he's he's living with with this person and she's actually not so bad and that's his wife you know so now you can reconnect with them and you can uh, make it work and you can uh, find pleasure in in being part of a family and enjoy the time and be positive. Recharge the batteries and look forward. You know, one day this will be over and then we can go back to work and then we will wish again for a bit of a pause and a break so that we can relax again. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna ask you the last question and I always close with a personal question. If you are in quarantine yes. right now, what do you do to keep active? Well, luckily I've got uh, I've got my office at at at, uh, at home, and I also have a, a gym at home, so I can uh, I can keep active. I've got a son that's about seventeen years old, so he keeps me going. So we play soccer in the garden, we play touch rugby, we play uh, you know all kinds of of, of sports. And, uh, and we, we at least keep busy. We can go to the gym in our house. So it, at least that helps a lot. So we keep active. We run around the garden and at least we make a plan and we make a point to be active because it's very important to keep going and do exercises and all the rest. So, uh, so we are very busy. In fact, uh, then you must also appreciate there's a lot of work in and out in and around the house that now needs to be done um, because we don't now have our domestic workers here. So uh, we need to do all the housework tasks also. So we really hope that this is getting over soon because we need a break from all of that. All right, perfect. Thank you for that personal question. And I wanna thank you for having this time I know we have seven hours of difference, so we have to coordinate me in the morning, you in the afternoon, and spending yes. a little bit of time explaining what's going on in the other part of the world. So in Panama, we can see and hear something different and not only what's on the news, all right? Yeah, no, thank you very much. And I've got lots of friends in Panama, and I want to say hi to all of them. It was very nice to, uh, connect with you again after we haven't seen each other in person for quite a while. All right. So thank you very much and send my regards to your wife and your family. All right. Same to your family. And I guess we'll see you the thank next you. time, maybe in South Africa or maybe in another interview. Definitely, but we'll make a plan to keep connected with each other. All right. See ya. Thank you very much. Keep well. Bye. Bye-bye. Gracias por ver nuestro video. Síganos en nuestras redes sociales. Si tienes preguntas, escríbenos. Si quieres saber algo diferente para otros.